3 million Texans without power as grid chaos continues ahead of imminent ice storm. The lack of gas flowing to power plants plus unprecedented demand for power has resulted in the state's highest ever electricity rates. Power demand has surpassed supply leading to massive blackouts for the last couple of days. Cell phone service is starting to break down over the region as backup generators at towers are freezing or running out of fuel or both. The freeze also took a toll on the state's energy industry, the country's largest crude refinery shuttered operations on Monday. Over the weekend, natural gas pipelines had restricted flow as wellheads froze. The cold snap in Texas has forced the shutdown of refineries, oil wells, and meat plants, disrupted shipments of soybeans and corn, and is still leaving more than 3 million customers without electricity could continue to keep parts of Texas in the dark for several days, according to Bloomberg. With more than 3 million customers without power, there is no way ERCOT will restore power tonight. It could be a couple of days before full power is restored. Bloomberg also said fuel storages are developing in the western half of the state. And the worst might not be over as a second winter storm could batter the state by midweek. This is exactly what the Green New Deal looks to achieve, and if we don't stop these tyrants this will be our life moving forward. It's unsustainable, it's inhumane, and it must not stand. This is worth fighting for. People really don't understand how vulnerable this whole thing is. Everything relies on baseline power systems. As in hydro, nuclear, coal, and natural gas systems. These are steady, 120 volt out of the residential socket systems. Texas went heavy windmills, which cycle voltage with changing wind conditions, and shut down in cold weather, case in point what's going on now. Solar covered in snow, ice, or clouded out is essentially and practically worthless, and you get at best 12 hours a day of generation. So barring any huge investment in battery systems is not really practical baseline power either. So anyone that really thinks we are going full green tech anytime soon, is an absolute knob. Welcome back to the Nomad Economist. What would a severe long-term crisis look like in this country? Despite all of our advanced technology, record cold temperatures have brought much of the U.S. to its knees. There has been an epic failure of the power grid in Texas, countless pipes that were not designed to handle such low temperatures have burst, and millions are without power and have no way to heat their homes right now. In fact, we are being told that 4.5 million people in Texas alone were without power on Tuesday. Extreme energy demand and overloaded frozen utility plants amid an unprecedented deep freeze in Texas are among the factors that led to nearly 4.5 million customers without power in the Lone Star State on Tuesday, experts say. Outages spread across Texas left millions in the dark and bitter cold amid single-degree temperatures and a winter storm that buried the state in snow and ice in recent days. No matter which way you cut it, this is a massive failure for a grid and a state that holds up energy and electricity as a shining example, said Varun Rai, the director of the Energy Institute at the University of Texas at Austin. Most of Texas is on a power grid that is independent from the rest of the nation, and this crisis has exposed how extremely vulnerable that grid can be during an emergency. Unfortunately, it appears that the cold weather is going to persist for a while, and Centerpoint Energy is telling residents in the Houston area to prepare for several more days of power shortages. Centerpoint Energy, the utility that delivers electricity to Houston area homes and distributes natural gas, provided an update on the ongoing grid chaos in Texas with some bad news Tuesday evening. Centerpoint said power shortages could last several more days and warned customers to take precautions for their personal safety. Of course it isn't just Texas that is suffering. According to one report, rolling blackouts have also been happening in the 14 states that make up the Southwest Power Pool. The Southwest Power Pool, which controls a grid spanning 14 states from North Dakota to Oklahoma, ordered rotating outages for a second consecutive day. This wasn't supposed to happen but it is. The extremely cold weather has also sent natural gas prices to utterly insane levels. All of a sudden there was a tremendous amount of demand for a limited amount of supply, and we saw prices do things that they have never done before. Supply for next day delivery at the Oneok Gas Transportation Hub in Oklahoma traded at $999 per million British thermal units for two contracts on Tuesday, according to David Hoy, a trader at Dynasty Power in Calgary. That compares with $4.19 a week earlier. 
Gas at the Henry Hub in Louisiana, the benchmark for futures in New York, traded at $19 at about 11.45 a.m. in New York after earlier soaring to $30, Hoy said. Supply at the hub traded at $3.24 a week ago. One industry official told Bloomberg that he had never seen anything quite like this. I've been following energy markets and grid issues for a while, and I cannot recall an extreme weather event that impacted such a large swath of the nation in this manner. The situation is critical, said Neil Chatterjee, a member of the U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. All it took was a very days of very cold weather. Would our system even be able to handle a long-term national crisis that was much more severe? I don't think so. Unfortunately, more bad weather is in the forecast. A giant winter storm will slam the middle of the country on Wednesday before hitting the east coast on Thursday. And more foul weather was on the way, another winter storm with snow and ice was forecast to pummel portions of the south and midwest on Wednesday before slamming into the mid-Atlantic and northeast on Thursday. In all, as of late Tuesday, 115 million Americans were in the path of the next storm, all the way from Texas to Massachusetts, the Weather Service said. Meanwhile, Bill Gates is trying to convince all of us that global warming is such a problem that we all need to start eating 100% synthetic beef from now on. Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates said in a new interview that all rich countries should transition to 100% synthetic beef in order to significantly curb the greenhouse gas emissions driving climate change. In an interview published Sunday by MIT Technology Review, Mr. Gates, who is now co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and chair of the investment fund Breakthrough Energy Ventures, said the U.S. switching to plant-based meats like those sold by Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat will be required for saving the planet. What crazy times these are. No matter what part of the U.S. you live in, you cannot just rely on the grid to heat your home. Right now, millions of Texans that assumed that the grid would always be there for them are literally shivering inside their own houses. You always need to have a second way to heat your home in case a major emergency happens. Of course those that have followed my advice over the years were already prepared for that. These record cold temperatures will be gone in a few days, and weather patterns will soon stabilize. But let us not forget the lessons that this crisis is teaching us, because the challenges that lie ahead will be far, far more difficult. At this moment, ABC News says that this cold snap has turned Texas into a tundra, and in Louisiana people are using an airboat to zip around the snow-covered streets. This isn't normal, and we are going to see a lot more crazy things happen in the months and years ahead. I would encourage you to get prepared for all of the strangeness that is in front of us, because as we have seen, the system is not nearly as stable as most people thought it was. I feel sorry for the people who have lost their power and have been left in the cold. However perhaps there is a silver lining to all of this. Maybe it will give more people incentive to start prepping and at least buy a generator for backup. We bought one big enough to power our entire home in case of a grid down. Fortunately so far we haven't lost our power and thus haven't needed to resort to the backup generator. But it was sure comforting to know it was there if we did lose power. In these temperatures a person might not last long. I just hope this encourages more people to take prepping seriously and stop thinking they can rely on the government or their utility companies to always be there for them. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.